So along with the rest of the family, I've always really enjoyed my father-in-law's rice custard pie, a traditional pie from the southern part of the Netherlands, the Limburg province. Here's the list of ingredients. He's going to be making it, I'm going to be filming. So there is a, quite a few steps, but it's uh, pretty easy to make. And we were lucky enough for him to share this recipe with us. As you can see, one of the ingredients is the yeast. So you do have to make a, a small dough for the uh, pie crust. But it uh, doesn't take very long. It's a small amount of dough. But you do have to follow the steps uh, in the order that uh, I filmed it. So we'll get started. The first thing to do is add one tablespoon of sugar to one cup of milk and warm it up. Usually a minute to a minute and a bit uh, in the microwave will do the trick. And you want it to be around 38 to 40 degrees Celsius. And you're going to use that to proof your yeast. So we're going to put that in the stand mixer bowl. And of course when you're proofing yeast you don't want the uh, milk to be too warm. You'll kill the yeast. But just give that a quick stir. Again, there's a little bit of sugar in the milk, so uh, that'll jump start the yeast. So basically just proving uh, the yeast right now and uh, let it sit for roughly 10 to 15 minutes while you're doing the other steps. So my father-in-law is going to add about a tablespoon roughly of uh, active dry yeast. Give it a stir. And we're going to cover that and let it sit for about 15 minutes while we do the next step. And back to the stove we're going to add the four cups or one liter of milk to a medium sized pot. You want to have a, a big enough pot for uh, later on when uh, you have the rice sugar and milk boiling. So have a decent sized pot. So we're not going to start heating that up yet. Uh, we're going to continue to work on our dough but in the meantime uh, while it's uh, proofing I'll show you that there's a half cup of rice and a half cup of sugar so he has it laid out in a container and ready to be put in once the milk is uh, heated up later on okay so the yeast is fine we can move on to the next step and we estimated roughly about two and a half cups of flour it's not a lot of flour and not a lot of dough he has a spoon that he uses which is roughly about a half a cup and he uh, you'll see him scoop that in so he's given uh, the mixture a quick stir on low speed has the dough hook in place and we're going to add about a teaspoon of oil and this region of the Netherlands, Limburg province, is known for their fla. So it's like a tart. It's a, a very shallow kind of pie, but you can use uh, fruit, rice, like apricots, prunes, um, sliced fruit on top. Some of them are pretty fancy. Um, I do enjoy this one because it's light and uh, airy with the egg white in it, and it's uh, pretty easy to make. So. Traditionally, they would uh, make these pies in the morning and give them to the workers midday out in the fields to kind of give them some uh, energy basically to uh, finish the jobs. So many, many pies were made back in the day and I get to film one now. So there you saw two and a half cups roughly and a pinch of salt. And you're going to let the mixer run probably for four to five minutes. So you can scrape down the sides and it will eventually start to form a, a dough ball. You're looking for a sticky dough. Then he adds a bit of flour to the walls of the bowl so it doesn't stick. And here you can see it's starting to come together. Again, this is a pretty small dough for the pie crust, so it doesn't take very long. Again, about four to five minutes. 
but just keep an eye on it. And he's just about done. Any flowers of work surface. And we're just going to place the dough on the counter and just work it by hand. Not more than 20 30 seconds, just basically to, to form uh, the ball. So we're going to cover that with a towel and put it in a warm area and then move on to our next step which is cooking the rice in the milk. So obviously when you're cooking milk you cannot uh, leave your stove unattended. A good tip from my father-in-law is to use a spoon with a flat bottom so you can kind of really feel the bottom of the pan and make sure that uh, there's no uh, no milk uh, starting to cook on the bottom so you can always just keep scraping so you do have to stay with this you can't uh, leave the stove because we all know what milk does when it boils over it makes a huge mess so this obviously takes some time but it's very important to not burn the bottom And there you can see it's just starting to have a light boil going. We're going to add our half cup of rice and half cup of sugar. So basically you're boiling down the milk. Um, it's going to, half of it's probably going to evaporate and it's going to start to thicken up as your rice uh, begins to cook. And there you can see it's just about done. It's nice and thick. But you, you still want to keep stirring and we're going to remove it from the heat. And there you can see on the bottom there's no no signs of burning. And that's what you want to see. And in the meantime our dough has doubled in size. So we're going to flour the work surface and turn the dough out on the counter. We're going to punch it down a bit. And my father-in-law has this very cool rolling pin that's really long and have a traditional long pin that you can uh, make, uh, make everything nice and even. So I wish I had one like that. So there you saw I was saying uh, the pan itself is about 11 inches. So uh, you're going to roll out uh, probably a couple extra inches on uh, to go over the, the the pan so about 13 or 14 inches at least and the type of pan is a uh, like a quiche tart pan you can get them on Amazon this one's actually from from the Netherlands but uh, you can get them 
you just have to uh, go on and, and have a look for quiche or tart pan. So what he's doing here is using the heat from the stove to warm up the, uh, the pan and just lightly grease it with some butter. Doesn't take a lot. And as you can see, the pan doesn't have very high sides. It's about a, a, a one inch and an eighth high, so it's a pretty uh, low-sided uh, pan. So there you can see he's flipping over the dough and then bring it over on top. You kind of have to stretch it out a bit. And again, you're, you want it to overlap the sides probably by an inch or two. So it's important that you, when you're rolling it out with the pin, that you make it a couple inches bigger in diameter than your pan. And here he's pushing the dough into the, the corners or the edges. And he's using the pin to cut the extra dough off the edge. which is a cool technique. Uh, you can also use a knife uh, as well or something else to uh, to make that cut. But uh, that extra dough he actually uh, cooks along with the pie off to the side and it makes just like a little bun. But it's perfectly good dough to, to bake as well. So you'll see that a little bit later on. And here he's docking the dough so you're adding some, some holes and that helps with uh, prevention of any air bubbles or pockets. So now that he has his pie shell made, he's going to move on to the next step. There you can see their rice mixture is nice and thick, good consistency. So here's another tip from Opa. He adds a bit of Bowles Advocat. So it's a brandy, eggs, sugar, uh, liquor from Holland. It's an optional step. It adds a little bit of a nice flavor. And that's roughly... A, a tablespoon to two tablespoons worth but uh, it is alcoholic but most of that burns off in the uh, cooking baking process so but it does add a nice little added flavor our next step is to separate our three eggs we are going to use the uh, egg white and the yolk we're going to separate them into two bowls I like this handy little device he has for uh, separating the eggs. I should get one of those. He also makes uh, an apricot flaw and a prune flaw. We all have our favorites, but uh, this one is one of my favorites. I do like uh, the flavors. It's a nice sweet pie, and uh, it's not too thick or heavy. You can eat it by hand, and a lot of times you put some whipping cream on top, so it's it really is delicious. So here you have the vanilla sugar. Um, you see this in some grocery stores in the international food section. I'm sure you can buy it online as well, but it's a vanilla flavored sugar. So you need two packets of those into your yolks. Okay, for now we're going to get our egg white. And we're going to use a hand blender for that. It doesn't take very long, 30 to 40 seconds. You just want to introduce air and fluff it up. And 
And at the same time you can take your yolks with the vanilla sugar and give that a quick stir. Mix it for about 10 seconds, it doesn't take very long obviously. So we're going to add that to your rice and uh, we remember we put the bowls advocate in there as well but yeah add it to your rice mixture rice and milk and just kind of fold that in so what he says to do is add half of the egg whites in first and fold them in gently don't do them all at once the reason you do that is uh, you get uh, you get a kind of a layered effect uh, with your your mixture in your pie pan so you'll see he'll add half of this mixture into his uh, on top of his dough You can just spread that out. And this is the reason it turns out so nice and light and airy uh, because of the egg white and uh, all the extra um, kind of air pockets. So that's kind of the secret to the recipe, I think. So fold in the, the other half. And we were lucky enough to get this on video because everyone knows he makes it, but no one really, uh, it's not really written down anywhere. So it's always good to record these things for the future as well. So all the family will know how to do it. And you just want to roughly even it out, but don't worry about the uh, the little peaks that you see there. That's how it's supposed to look. We're going to preheat the oven to 350 or 175 degrees Celsius. And it will only cook for about a half an hour. So another tip he had was to have pizza stones in your oven. Um, that helps to cook the bottom of the crust a little bit faster and more evenly and there you can see the extra dough that he throws in to uh, cook as well there's nothing wrong with it it's perfectly good dough so we'll let that go for one half hour And there's what it looks like. We're going to let that cool. You take it out of the uh, pan and place it either on a wire rack or on a plate. In this case a plate. And he's going to cut us a nice piece. So we can see what it looks like inside. The traditional way of eating this is just by hand. So you don't have to have a fork and a knife. You can just you know, if you want, put some whipping cream on top and just eat it by hand. It's really good. A nice sweet pie. And there's kind of a bit of a close-up of what it looks like inside. And yes, that vanilla sugar, it does add some nice flavor. It does keep for quite a while as well. So, a big thank you to Opa for showing us how to make this. It's very special that we could see it on film so everyone can know how to make it. So, try it out. Subscribe for upcoming videos, and thanks for watching. Bye for now.